On this episode of WTF, we are showing you how to use potassium sorbet in a range of different recipes from gummies to beverages to baked goods. Hello and welcome to WTF. I'm Janie. And I'm Ben. And today we are showing you how to safely use potassium sorbate in all different kinds of foods to extend the shelf life of your recipes. So remember to subscribe and you'll get notified of our future episodes and stick around for the weekly giveaway. As the part of the kickoff to our preservation series, we wanted to talk about potassium sorbate because it's a safe preservative. Can you talk a little bit about what is potassium sorbate and you know, where it came from? Yeah, so potassium sorbate is a salt of sorbic acid. Mm -hmm. So uh, sorbic acid is essentially an acid mm -hmm. that comes from a plant called the rowan tree. Uh, sorbic acid by itself has a very narrow range of application. Mm -hmm. So in order to preserve things, it, you know, we kind of have to make it bend to our will. Okay. And in order to do that, we create a salt. Uh, there are different types of sorbate salts. Potassium sorbate is just one of them. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, that allows us to put sorbic acid into a wide range of, of uh, gummies, beverages, or baked goods. Yeah, and is this um, product, you know, I know that nowadays it's produced synthetically. What, um, where did it come from originally? So it, it did come from nature. So that's, that's the important part. So it came from uh, a berry produced on the rowan tree, mm -hmm. right? It's actually an oil produced by this berry, so you can't just use the berry juice and have it preserved. Okay. Uh, so ultimately, they found this oil, found sorbic acid, and it wasn't until maybe 70, 70 years after its discovery in 1849 <laughs> that it was actually discovered and reported to have antimicrobial benefits. Mm -hmm. uh, and at which point, started to use it in you know, factory use for dried fruits and uh, dairy products. And one of the things that people are often afraid of when they are thinking about preservatives is whether or not this is safe. And one of the things we love about potassium sorbate is that it is safe and in fact is recognized by the FDA as uh, what's referred to as grass. Can you talk a little bit about for folks who are not familiar, what exactly is grass and why does that m what does that mean for food safety? So grass is a uh, acronym for generally referred to as safe or regarded as safe. Uh, and it's something that the FDA labels a product that when used within their specifications mm -hmm. and with proper GMP protocol, which is, you know, good manufacturing practice, uh, ultimately that means, you know, having a safe, clean, uh, contaminant-free environment, mm -hmm. along with the appropriate use of product. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a safe uh, and consumable good. Yeah, and we're going to show you today how do you properly use potassium sorbate. But of course, before we do, I need to add a disclaimer here that everything we're talking about today is for informational purposes only. If you're like, I want to incorporate this, we're going to be talking a little bit later on about certain, you know, what to look for in order to test it. But again, it's all informational. So if you are looking to, you know, bring your product to market or whatever it is that most people are using it for, um, or just to extend your shelf life, you should take certain precautions to make sure your food is safe. All right, that said, what are what is the common usage method and dosage for potassium sorbate? Okay, so the appropriate usage of potassium sorbate is a very narrow window. Mm -hmm. uh, typically, I use it in between a range of 0.1 percent mm -hmm. to 0.3 percent okay. of the total weight of the recipe. Mm -hmm. That's just the range that uh, is recommended through uh, you know, peer-reviewed study, mm -hmm. as well as my personal recommendation, just for use. It's, mm -hmm. it's been my experience that starting at 0.1% is a real easy number to hit, it's a real easy number to calculate, mm -hmm. and it tends to produce a good result. Um, so when we say as a base of the whole recipe, for instance, we have 250 grams of gummy, mm -hmm. okay? If we have 250 grams, 0.1% is 0.2%. To five grams. Yeah, that's less, even a quarter of a gram. Right, so you just move the decimal place over three times. It's real easy math, and you can do it in your head. So mm -hmm. it's just, you know, food for thought out there. Keep it simple, keep the math simple. Yeah, and I think also for people who are concerned about the presence of preservatives in their food, 
you're looking at for an entire batch less than one gram, like oh a yeah. quarter of a gram is how much you're using. So exactly. when you translate that to a couple hundred gummies or whatever, it turns out like uh, you're, you're barely getting any in there, right. but it's having the antimicrobial effects of extending your shelf life. If you're wondering about extending your shelf life, you know, we did the primer last week. You can check that out in the links in the description below. Um, but let's kind of maybe walk through a little bit of how do you incorporate potassium sorbate into, you know, today we have the gummies, we have like a beverage, a, a random beverage, and we have kind of some flowers, you know, in preparation to bake some muffins. And how do you incorporate that into these three very different types of um, medium? Okay, so uh, it kind of has our work cut out for us just because two thirds of what we're working with is water-based. Okay. We already said that potassium sorbate loves water. Mm -hmm. It's gonna go into these easily at room temperature. Mm -hmm. If you ever find that it's not dissolving, some mild heat will make it dissolve. Okay. So real easy for liquids. Mm -hmm. For baked goods, I think people just overcomplicate it. And it's really just uh, using the same basic weight calculation mm -hmm. and adding it to your dry ingredients okay. before you mix. All right. So let's just go for it. So we have a, a gummy mixture right here with some raspberry. With our culinary, culinary crystals. crystals. <laughs> so I'm gonna add this. I'm coaching Ben on mentioning the product. I'm like, mention it. I can't even open them. So you wanna do the honors? This might be a cut here, I hear. <laughs> <laughs> I think Scott usually Scott already- Scott makes it look so easy, yeah. I think Scott usually already have it popped out before we start. There you hey, go. Hey, thank you. Okay, real I welcome. say we leave that, that was great. Okay, <laughs> right in. Oh, and this is red too, so it's gonna make it a muddy color. This is great. And we're gonna add our potassium oh, sorbate. Oh, we already had green in there, and now they're, yeah. gonna, now they're gonna be brown gummies. It's okay, That's it's okay. okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure myself. <laughs> but we're worried about the potassium sorbate, and that just goes right in. And all we're gonna do is gonna stir. Okay, so no special, like, no blender, just a, just a plain old whisk. I mean, you can use a blender, but when it comes down to uh, gummies, mm -hmm. you can whip air into it. So okay. what I'm doing is just gentle, gentle stir. I don't want to incorporate too many air bubbles. Okay. And at what stage of the base is it? Kind of just the very this end, is the right very before end. you pour. Okay. I mean, ultimately, you can add it to your uh, your water before you even add it to you know your syrup. Mm -hmm. But I mean, a last minute addition. You can control uh, your cook. You don't have to waste an ingredient if the cook goes wrong. And, you know, tends to just go in pretty easily. Okay. And I think that is a common question we get. People are like, I'm not sure at what stage. So knowing last stage for gummies, great, easy peasy. Yeah. I mean, God forbid, like you go through a whole recipe and, you know, doesn't set or something. You just waste a little bit of ingredient. If you can hold it off till the very last moment, it should okay. be good. Perfect. But and then it's ready to pour from there. Ready to pour from there. Awesome. And we can if you want, but. Nah, it's okay, because we got like, we. I want to cover the liquids because, you know, one of the things we didn't mention before, but is that if you go to the grocery store, you're going to find potassium sorbate in pretty much everything. Yeah. That's, um, you know, <laughs> anything that needs a really long shelf life. Yeah. So you're going to see it in cheeses, uh, cheeses, you know, yogurts. yogurts, like all kinds of stuff. So if you just have a liquid, um, and then we said Kool-Aid, but it could be anything. It could be anything. This yeah. could be, it could be lemonade that you made at home. Mm -hmm. uh, the important thing to consider about a lot of these applications is what your, uh, I guess you can call it your base uh, contamination. Mm -hmm. uh, so I mean, if you're working with clean ingredients, you can really start with a low dilution. Mm -hmm. If you have like fruits or purees or anything that has like an organic element, you probably want to use a little more. Okay, that's a good tip as well. So that might sometimes be the difference between that point one to point three. Exactly, okay. exactly. And and all of this is really dependent on how clean you work too. Mm -hmm. So how clean your tools are, how clean you are, it, it really all plays a factor. Cool. All right, and this is the easy part. This is just room temperature water mixed with purple drink. And I kind of what I like about the potassium sorbate is that it's um it's d dissolving pretty it much as soon instantly. as you put it in. Yeah. So unlike our, a lot of our hydrocolloids, this doesn't require a lot of, well, that was that was like literally two seconds. Done. <laughs> okay, that was super easy. Yeah. Um, all right, and now we have our baked goods and you said it's okay to just pour it in with your flour? Yeah, so essentially we can get this in, get the mixer down and stirring, 
So it incorporates with your dry goods, but as you, you know, incorporate your eggs, incorporate your oils, uh, but ultimately, uh, this is going to work with any chemically leavened uh, recipe. So mm -hmm. any kind of muffin recipe, any kind of cookie recipe, this should do the job. Yes. And which brings me to my next question. The one of the things we know about potassium sorbate is that um, sometimes it has a hard time in like uh, bread. And why is that? Yeah. So the, the reason why it has a hard time in bread is the very reason we're using it to prevent, you know, microbial growth. Mm -hmm. So it does a really good job of decreasing yeast uh, reproduction, essentially. Okay. So uh, what we're doing is we're creating a semi-acidic environment with mm -hmm. potassium sorbate, and yeast doesn't like that. Mm -hmm. Basically, we'll cease, uh, basically it's, uh, why can't I think here, it's fermentation and it's, and it's proofing, essentially. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so at the end of the day, uh, there are other products for potassium sorbate that might be more suited for breads and doughs. Yeah, so one of the things we're kind of looking into is seeing whether there's, there are products out there, they're called encapsulated potassium sorbate, which allows you to have that potassium sorbate activate during the baking process. So we are currently running some tests here in the kitchen, and if it does find work, you know, we'll, we'll, we're definitely gonna share that with you. So, so what we're gonna see, it's early stages of so testing right now. So fundamentally, if mm -hmm. you use potassium sorbate in like a, a yeast-based dough, you're gonna find that your rise isn't quite what it should be. So mm -hmm. it might produce a flat or sticky loaf. Yeah, because it's killing off all your, all your stuff. The good stuff. Yeah, uh, so one of the things uh, when we're thinking about demos is that we want to show just how easy it is to incorporate them into your recipes. If you have any specific questions about different ways of using potassium sorbate, leave them in the comments in the description below or about comments about preservation or anything like that in order to enter to win this week's giveaway which will be a bag of the potassium sorbate. So leave your comments and questions about preservation, about potassium sorbate, and enter to win this bag, and you can try it out for yourself. Now, before we wrap up, I do want to talk, touch upon what do you do in order to test about the extension of shelf life? And of course, some people are out there wondering, how, okay, I've done this, I've, act this, I've added potassium sorbate to my muffin, how long is it going to be good for? Yeah, definitive statements are hard to come by. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so fundamentally, like we were saying earlier, it depends on how clean you operate, mm -hmm. plays a part. Uh, but really the only way to truly test uh, is through longevity studies. So mm -hmm. uh, for instance, with this drink, we could prepare, prepare three different dilutions with potassium sorbate and leave them out mm -hmm. and essentially gauge them over time to see what their spoilage is. Mm -hmm. Uh, that comes down to sight and smell and, I mean, if you're feeling up to it, taste. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's just the at-home version. And it can really get as complicated as you want it to be. Uh, mm -hmm. So you can essentially have your product tested at a third-party lab and yep. they can come back with an independent analysis. Yeah. And of course, if you're trying to bring something to market, that's, that's the right way to go about that. Um, but for example, you know, when we are testing the encapsulated here in the next few weeks and months, we're going to make loaves of bread and we're going to be kind of keeping our eye on it. Which one's going moldy faster? Which one, you know, like, how does it taste? I'm going to make Ben taste a 30, 30 <laughs> day old bread. going to be a bread. lot of bread. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so there's definitely, definitely different ways to use it. But again, it's not a hard product to use as you kind of see here we demonstrated today. Just stir, stir, and that's pretty much that. So. Um, give it a go and let us know what you think. And then we'll be back here testing all the different products. And until next week, from here in a modernist pantry test kitchen, I'm Janie. And I'm Ben. 